The Hoover Gang has been in Portland for decades, but we wanted to know who are these people, how they've been affecting our community throughout the years. This gang has a long and dangerous history throughout the state, dating back to attempted murder back in the 80s. This indictment lays out three identified murders, seven attempted murders, multiple gun seizures, and the trafficking of methamphetamine, heroin, and cocaine. They pride themselves on being everybody killers, BBK standing for that everybody killers. Okay, we out in Portland for the first time, Oregon to be exact. In fact, this is Oregon's first federal racketeering trial against street-level gang members. We are not going to waste any time, let's get into it. A longtime Hoover criminal gang member who for more than 30 years engaged in a violent pattern of criminal racketeering activity, including numerous acts of murder, robbery, and drug distribution, was sentenced to life in federal prison. A superseding indictment accuses convicted felon, Lorenzo Laren Jones, of killing two gang rivals in southeast Portland in 2017 and 1998. Jones is also accused of eight other shootings, possessing stolen guns and distributing cocaine, heroin and methamphetamine, between 1988 and 2018. The Hoovers are a notorious violent criminal organization, and Lorenzo Jones was among the gang's most senior and violent members, said the U.S. Attorney for the District of Oregon. This prosecution is an important milestone in our effort to combat gun violence in Portland and surrounding communities. We will continue working with our partners to investigate and prosecute violent gangs that disrupt the security and safety of our neighborhoods. Lorenzo Jones was not only a leader of a violent street gang, he was also recruiting and grooming kids on the streets of Portland to carry out violent acts on behalf of this gang. Prosecutors say Lorenzo Jones is the latest suspect to be federally indicted following a 30-year streak of racketeering and murders. He's been referred to as a shot caller, but he's actually a violent criminal who used guns and drugs to wreak havoc on our shared community said the special agent in charge of the FBI Portland field office. Jones will now spend the rest of his life where he belongs, in federal prison. According to court documents, the Hoovers are a criminal street gang operating in Oregon, known to engage in acts of violence including murder, robbery, and drug dealing. The Hoovers originated in Los Angeles in the late 1960s and established a presence in Portland in the early 1980s. The gang has a loose hierarchical structure in which members have different amounts of power and influence, based on age and gang activity. To maintain status and increase one's position in the gang, members are expected to carry out violence on behalf of the enterprise. In Portland, they divided into two sets, Hoover 107 and the 74 Hoover, according to prosecutors. They are self-described as, everybody killers. To gain membership into the gang, an indictment alleges, the Hoovers used an initiation process known as jumping in, in which members physically beat new recruits for 74 seconds or 107 seconds, depending on which Hoover set the new recruit was invited to join. The indictments allege that the Hoovers adopted a code of conduct described in a published book called The Groove Scriptures. The book describes the history of the enterprise, promotes the superiority of the Hoovers and guides members on clothing, colors, symbols, language to use, how to treat enemies, how to earn respect, and how to respond to disrespect, prosecutors allege. In Oregon, the Hoovers developed rivalries with local Crip gang sets, including the Portland original Kirby Block Crips and Columbia Villa Crips, as well as several Los Angeles-based Crip sets, including the Rolling Sixties Crips, according to prosecutors. Hoover gang members, prosecutors say, commonly wear the color orange. The Houston Astros H inside a star logo was a common emblem that Hoover members displayed on their clothing, as well as orange bandanas and tattoos of an H with a star, the letters SF, and the numbers 74 and 107. Portland detectives have said that the 2013 fatal shooting of Deryul Joseph Harris, 30, a blood gang member, by a Hoover rival, Xavier Dorel Bolden, outside the Fontainebleau nightclub in northeast Portland, caused a war between the two gangs. Bolden was sentenced to life in 2017 after he was convicted of murder in Multnomah County Circuit Court. This war between the Hoover criminals and the Bloods has been directly tied to a large number of the shootings within Portland each year and is ongoing, a Portland officer wrote in an affidavit. The Portland police said the violence associated with the gang has caused fear and unimaginable trauma in the community through drive-by shootings, property damage and homes hit by bullets. 
Jones, who also goes by the name Low Down, as longtime member and self proclaimed shot caller of the Hoovers, who rose through the ranks of the criminal organization from baby gangster to gangster to original gangster. Multiple witnesses described Jones as a big homie who played a leadership role in the gang, mentoring younger members and recruits, and using them to conduct business and violence for the gang. Jones, aka Low Down, is charged with fatally shooting Wilbert Billy Butler, 27, of Eugene, early on September 17, 2017, within two blocks of Cleveland High School. Portland police responded to the 3600 block of 28th Avenue, which is about a block south of Powell Boulevard, at 1.41 a.m. medics rushed Butler by ambulance to a hospital. Several hours later, police reported he was dead. Jones was found with a stolen Glock 40 caliber gun used in Butler's fatal shooting, according to the new indictment. He's accused of killing Butler with an allied Inglewood family blood gang member, according to the new indictment. Jones was initially charged in Butler's killing in Multnomah County Circuit Court in January. His co-defendant in Butler's killing, Joel Matthew McCool Jr., was said to have been prosecuted on murder allegations in Multnomah County Circuit Court, according to Multnomah County's district attorney. Jones is also accused of killing Asensio Genchi Garcia, 27, on July 19, 1998, at the El Moro Apartments at 2016 Southeast 122nd Avenue. In the hours before the shooting, a fight brewed at the apartment complex between a large group of Latino men and several African American men, according to Portland Police. Garcia's death has been on the police bureau's list of unsolved cold case homicides. Jones entered not guilty pleas to seven federal counts in U.S. District Court in Portland. Racketeering conspiracy and two counts each of murder in aid of racketeering, carrying and using a gun in a crime of violence, and causing a death through the use of a gun. But before we go into the specifics of Low Downs crimes, we have to talk about another fellow senior Hoover gang member, Ronald Clayton Rhodes. He and two accomplices were hit with racketeering conspiracy, murder in aid of racketeering, using and carrying a firearm during a crime of violence, and causing death using a firearm. Rhodes, also known as Big Fly, joined the Hoovers in 2005 and spent 10 of his 11 years with the gang in prison. In the brief periods of time he spent out of custody, he committed one murder, one attempted murder, one home invasion robbery, and dealt drugs. Rhodes, known by fellow gang members as Big Fly, played a leadership role in the gang, setting a violent example for multiple Little Fly gang members who, like Rhodes, committed violent criminal acts to elevate their status in the gang. The Hoover gang member who shot and killed a 21-year-old man in Portland in 2015 and then testified against his fellow gang members in a racketeering conspiracy trial, was sentenced to 16 and a half years in federal prison. Javier Fernando Hernandez, who went by the street name Stony Fly, fired at two men smoking outside a plaid pantry in southeast Portland on December 16, 2015. One of the men, Kyle Polk, 21, was killed. The shooting, prosecutors said at trial, was an attempt to get back at rivals after a Hoover leader was shot and wounded in downtown Portland two days earlier. Yet, Polk was not a rival. He was on his way home from work and died almost immediately from a single gunshot to his upper abdomen at the front door of the convenience store at Southeast Division and 112th Avenue. He admitted his role in shooting the deadly shots that killed Kyle Polk, a young man who simply was waiting for a friend at the wrong place, at the wrong time, the assistant U.S. attorney wrote to the court. Polk was not a threat to anyone. Yet he was murdered in cold blood. Hernandez, who was riding in a car driven by veteran gang member Ronald Clayton Big Fly Rhodes, said they both thought Polk was a rival, and Rhodes ordered him to shoot. Polk's parents will never get over the loss of their youngest child, Bolstead said. The Polks described their son as fun-loving and happy, kind and empathetic, loyal and dependable, and a young man who had big plans for his future. Six months before his death he had obtained his associate degree with honors and wanted to continue his education to some day, earn a doctorate degree in history. Kyle Polk's older brother recently got married, but he was without his best man. Yet he honored his brother's memory at his wedding by draping a suit jacket on a chair that held flowers. At the Hoover racketeering trial, Hernandez, 26, testified that he fired at two men who were smoking outside the plaid pantry from the front passenger seat of a white SUV driven by fellow Hoover Ronald Rhodes. He said Rhodes gave him the gun and told him to shoot. 
Moments before he fired, Hernandez testified. Rhodes asked the two men, Hey Groove, where are you from? One of the men answered that he was from Oakland and wasn't tied to a gang, Hernandez said. The other man said he was 60s and threw up his gang signs, Hernandez said. Yet in Hernandez's first sit-down with investigators and prosecutors, he said Rhodes fired a gun that killed Pope. Pope's friend who was with him that day told police that the front passenger in the white SUV was the person who had questioned them and then fired. After the shooting, Rhodes and Hernandez cleaned the gun and tossed it into the Columbia River, according to prosecutors and court testimony. They also returned the rental suburban they were riding in at the time of the Pokes killing and hid out in Salem, according to Hernandez's trial testimony. The Hoovers that day had been looking for rivals to harm in retaliation for the wounding four days earlier of one of the Portland Hoover founders, Leonard Ray Brightman Jr., in downtown Portland. The Hoovers believed rolling 60 Crips were responsible for the shooting, according to the testimony. Police connected the shell casings from the homicide scene and linked them to a shooting two days earlier, on December 14, 2015. Hernandez and Rhodes, according to cell phone tower evidence, were placed in the area of that prior shooting, prosecutor said. One man was injured in the shooting, but it's unclear if Hernandez ever fired a shot then. According to court records, Hernandez spent most of his childhood without his father, who was deported. Hernandez testified that he had met Rhodes after he dropped out of Vancouver's Evergreen High School a month before graduation, in the wake of getting kicked off the football team for a fight. He started to sell marijuana to get money just to smoke. One of his dealers introduced him to Rhodes, and soon Hernandez was driving around Portland with Rhodes every day, dealing hard drugs, including cocaine, heroin, ecstasy and anything that I could get my hands on, he testified. He estimated the two made about $3,500 on a typical day selling drugs in Portland, profits that they split in half. Hernandez was jumped into the 107 Hoovers at age 19, a week before the plaid pantry killing, he testified. Rhodes, who went by Big Fly on the street, picked out Hernandez's gang name, Stony Fly Coon, making him part of the informal Hoover Fly family. Rhodes would end up receiving the same prison sentence as Low Down, life plus 10 years. Let's get back to Low Down though. As we stated, Low Down was said to be involved in a series of crimes. One situation took place approaching the summer of 2017. Neighbors in Gresham woke up to gunshots early this morning. This happened on Northeast 183rd just about 90 minutes ago. More than a dozen officers are out there right now. Tim Gordon just talked to one neighbor, Tim, who heard the gunshots, and he says this actually happens a lot in his neighborhood. Yeah, he says a couple times a week. He's lived here for about a decade, and uh, he says it's just gotten worse and worse. A lot of uh, shots fired, he says, in the neighborhood, and apparently the shots that were fired very early this morning uh, have at least injured one person, possibly more. We're waiting for confirmation from Gresham Police at this point on just who was injured here uh, off 183rd Avenue near Wasco. You can see the police activity there. There are Gresham Police here as well as Portland Police, uh, Fairview as well, and this is video we shot just a while ago. This was called in as shots fired about 4.50 this morning, but uh, when officers got here, they obviously found more than that. As we were driving out to this location, we saw an ambulance uh, followed by a police cruiser going uh, with lights and sirens uh, westbound on I-84, presumably to a trauma center. Don't know if that's connected with this, but we won't be surprised if that is the case. Uh, we saw that as we came out this way. Uh, again, that neighbor that we uh, spoke with, uh, not surprised by the shooting here. He says uh, it's just too, all too common. Here's what he heard early this morning. Uh, about 429, I heard three loud gun shots. Then I heard about a dozen uh, muffled shots, like somebody's trying to silence them. But uh, like I say, in this neighborhood, it's not uncommon to have Gunshots probably two, three times a week. Um, sometimes you call 911, they show up, sometimes they don't. And that observation confirmed by another woman we spoke with who said the same thing. She's lived here for quite a while and says she hears the same type of unfortunate activity in her neighborhood as well. So people getting up this morning, seeing this scene, you see across the way there are detectives here now. Uh, there's a man over there holding a young child. And uh, as they try and figure all this out, on May 22, multiple gunmen broke into an apartment in Gresham and shot at the family inside. Nine-year-old LH was shot nine times, and his mother was also struck. Two-year-old KH and her father, Irvin Rennell Herring Jr., were not hit. Detectives recovered both 9mm and 40 caliber casings at the scene. 
Evering Jr. told investigators he was a member of the Woodlawn Park Bloods. The detective learned that, at the time, there was an ongoing feud between the Woodlawn Park Bloods and the Hoovers. Investigators learned that a known Hoover gang member, Chris, lived with his girlfriend near the scene of the shooting. Investigators learned from Chris's girlfriend that Chris received a call shortly before the shooting and that the caller said they were going to hit E.H. Jr. Investigators then obtained Chris's phone records and learned that he had received a call from Nakim, also a known Hoover, shortly before the shooting. The detective then applied for a search warrant for Nakim's cell phone records and learned that he was in the area of the shooting at the time of the shooting. Nakim and Chris then traveled to an apartment where Rashad, another known Hoover, resided. Nakim's phone records also revealed extensive communications with Corey, a high-ranking Hoover, in the hours before the shooting. His story is pretty crazy too, but we will save that for another video. Anyway, Detective Wright obtained a warrant for Corey's cell phone records. By comparing the location data, the detective determined that the phones belonging to all three made calls in the area of Southeast 136th Avenue and Southeast Division Street in a three-minute span shortly before the shooting. This was Lowdown's last known residence. Investigators interviewed Brown twice. On June 1, 2017, Nakim initially denied any involvement with the shooting. He then admitted that he was in the area and named about 10 other Hoover gang members, but denied going into the apartment. On June 23, 2017, after being arrested for attempted murder, Nakim identified Christopher Sims Barlow and Low Down as the shooters. He claimed not to know Low Down's real name, but claimed he was an OG who had just gotten out of the federal penitentiary after serving 18 years. An investigator showed Nakim a picture of Low Down, and Nakim confirmed that this was the person he knew as Low Down. Crazy thing is, Nakim is related to at least two of the suspects charged with the death of Review Herring, who was pregnant when she was murdered August 17, 2014, by a barrage of bullets fired from at least six different guns at and through the sliding back door of her apartment. She was the relative of Evren Herring Jr. Court records show the shooting was in retaliation after a fight between the Hoover and Woodland Park Bloods gangs. Heron's mom spoke during the sentencing of one of the men. Every time he had been in the courtroom, he smirked and smelled it. Just like when he was walking in, smelled it. He has no remorse for what he has done to me and my family. 23-year-old Nakeem Brown faces nine counts of attempted aggravated murder, plus burglary and assault charges for the shooting. Brown spent five years in prison with the Oregon Youth Authority, convicted of robbery and assault when he was just 16 years old. Brown had been sent to Oregon's Department of Corrections to serve added time for violating contraband rules while in custody. It turns out Brown was put into a DOC halfway house and was wanted for leaving that program at the time of the shooting. Brown was arrested three weeks ago shortly after the shooting for that violation, then arrested again Friday for the shooting itself. By September, a murder would take place, the murder of Wilbert Butler. On September 17, 2017, Wilbert Butler was shot while leaving a party at an apartment complex in southeast Portland. Based on the presence of both 9mm caliber and 40 caliber casings at the scene, a Portland Police Bureau detective concluded that there had been two shooters. A witness described observing a black male firing in a westerly direction from where the 40 caliber casings were found, and described the subject as a black male, average height, skinny, short-haired, and wearing a plain white t-shirt. On September 18, 2017, a family member of Butler called the detective and stated that the person who shot Butler was named Jojo McCool, also known as Young Terrific, that McCool and the victim had been at a party together, and that the victim helped McCool get away from the party. On September 20, 2017, the detective received a call from another witness who said that he had seen two black males running away from a parking lot near the scene of the shooting. The witness stated that one of the black males was not wearing a shirt and that the other was wearing a white t-shirt. Both men got into a gray or silver square boxy looking sedan driven by a third party. The detective offered some types of cars matching that description and the witness indicated that it was a Chrysler 300. At this point, the detective had no information or basis to believe that defendant Jones was involved in the shooting. At 1.45 p.m. on September 20, 2017, a special agent from the Drug Enforcement Administration called the detective and informed him that a confidential, reliable informant had told him that the shooters were Lorenzo Jones and Little Joe. 
Two days later, an officer called the detective and informed him that he had observed low down driving a Chrysler 300 in Eugene, Oregon. On September 27, 2017, officials obtained surveillance footage from the apartment complex, which the detective later reviewed. The footage shows both Jones and McCool carrying objects, similar in shape and size to a handgun, in the minutes before and after the shooting. Not much else goes down after this, but evidence was gathered from searches of locations, as well as DNA. With all this, as we stated, Low Down received a life sentence. But for now, this about wraps this up. We will be back in Portland soon with more stories, especially the Hoovers, who have a heavy presence. But as always, stay low and thanks for watching.